Once upon a time, I did not understand EOS. Even after having been involved with Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies, I still didn't get EOS, didn't understand the purpose. Now I get EOS. Have spent a couple of weeks of immersion into the tech. I get EOS. Now I'm at a point where my EOS bag is where I want it to be. I figured I'd do a little bit of a synopsis, if you will. Had the opportunity to utilize a number of smart contracts on the platform and have been happy with that experience, have enjoyed the rewards of doing so. Not something I monitored every day, per se, but happened to check in on it this morning and realized that couple of the contracts that I have been using had uh, changed their yield. Yield went down quite significantly. So, and that's fine. Perhaps an indicator of more people utilizing those contracts, staking. And so I made the determination that it was time to unstake on those contracts and do something else with the proceeds. So respectable earning in one example, staking for a little over a week, about 600 EOS. The yield was 2.01 EOS or something like that. That doesn't sound so impressive, but Relatively speaking, you compare that to what you would get in a bank, or shall I say, what you wouldn't get in a bank, that is extremely respectable. As a part of that staking, I also generated some EOSDT, and that one Decent earning that that started out at about 14% and that yielded some some as well some additional ESDT the unfortunate reality there however is There's really Not a whole lot of Upside to trying to utilize EOSDT EOSDT and what I mean by that is you can get EOS DT, the stable coin, <clears throat> but what you learn is if you, as you take it to different exchanges, uh, New Dex or Hit BTC is the one that I used, you find that the withdrawal fees for coins on those platforms are such that it um, at a minimum negates any gain that you would realize doing things with EOSDT. Worst case, it, it, it actually becomes uh, a bit of a loss for you. So EOSDT, I think I've concluded, not really a thing, just it doesn't, there's not a, there's, there's no real way to make it make sense. So have to punt on that one unfortunately a little bit of exploration I'll call it with DeFi box and I I don't know the uh, the maybe it's just me but I didn't 
really participate, interact with any, any of the contracts uh, presented on DeFi Box simply because the UI on those projects just looked really sketch. Couldn't, couldn't bring myself to trust them. So didn't do anything there. <clears throat> and the other point that I'll make, also a bit of a disappointment, the, the concept of being able to bridge liquidity that exists on Ethereum, bridge that over to EOS. It's a grand concept. I think it's, it, it needs to be done. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. My experience tried to use the Bifrost over on Curve.Finance and after spending probably a hundred dollars worth of ethereum trying to get that to work decided to give up on it just it's not ready for prime time now the other thing to say about that is that there are other bridges on other chains that work really really well and so back to my point in an earlier video about the success of EOS being dependent upon the community making it a success, that is that is so true. And what I, you know, what I'm a little bit concerned about is I went back, went back and forth on Telegram with the folks. That, you know, it seemed like some developers. Um, for Curve.Finance and the Bifrost. And one guy tried really helpful, explained a lot of things about you know how things were, were conceived and developed, and I think his heart's in the right place. But uh, where the problem exists with the Bifrost, there was literally no response from anyone who had the power or skill set to address the problems with the Bifrost. So that just feels to me like, uh, you know, in business school, we talk about first mover advantage coming up against the um, agile new market entrant. And that's you know, that experience with the, the failure with the Bifrost and then seeing that functionality exist on other chains felt exactly like how you know, a, a business school case study would unfold. Uh, someone like, you know, someone in, first into a market segment, great ideas, great concepts, seemingly great, great products, only to be crushed by a new market entrant who is committed, who has grit, who has focus, who has a dedicated team committed to success. And so we will see, time will tell. It's been a great learning experience. And as I say, it's going to be a multi-chain world. No doubt about that in my mind. And I'm going to continue to broaden my horizons, expand my knowledge base, and explore some new chains and how DeFi is unfolding across the landscape and how that might complement EOS as well. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe, and you will see me in the next video.